up, everybody? This is Open Discussion with C3 Films. My name is Chris, and this is... Cheryl. And today we're going to be talking about the sh the Netflix show, You. Now, we are talking about everything that has been released up until this point, which at the time of recording is the first half of season four. The second half of season, season four comes out sometime in March, at which point maybe we'll come back and we'll talk about the ending for season four, or the second half of it. But that that is a spoiler alert. If you haven't seen any of the first four seasons or the half of the season four that has been out, then go and check it out on Netflix and come back and see what we have to say about it. But let's go ahead and jump right into it. I was recommended to watch you um, by a friend at the time, and then eventually another friend also told me to watch you. So I didn't think that I would, it was going to be a show that... I, I didn't know anything about it, actually, to be honest. So I didn't know if I would like it or if I didn't, but I just... I'm always skeptical, skeptical skeptical yeah skeptical of new shows and this one i went in with full skepticism but i was pleasantly surprised because i am someone who was in love with the show dexter back in the its heyday and the the style and aesthetic of the show reminded me some of like the best aesthetics from dexter despite not really being like the same as Dexter, there's a there's similar energy and DNA between the two shows, and that's the thing that got me pulled in because I mean in both cases, our main character is kind of kind of a creep. Kind of, but you root for him, and that's like <laughs> that's why I like it so much. Um, because like how 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 good are you where you can create a show where like <laughs> yeah kind of <laughs> <laughs> I <Hold> mean on, <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> bro is a criminal but <laughs> so <true>. is Batman <laughs> that's also true so is, yeah but um but I mean I feel like it's it's only kind of because you even though he's a criminal like you like him and that's why i feel like it's almost like a justified creepiness not it's, it's not really but it's like digestible yes because that's what it comes down to because even when we watch like it's like the heist movie um mentality like whenever you watch a heist movie the people that you're following are usually thieves so they're actively trying to break the law and to do something that is inarguably wrong. But the personalities of the cast, the the way they interact with each other, that all makes you kind of forget the fact that if these people were stealing from you, you'd be you, you'd hate them. Yeah. Um, so kind of and with um, the case. Sorry, go mm -hmm. ahead. Go ahead. Finish. Your oh, thought. I was just gonna say, and with the case with Joe Goldberg, like I think he kind of like has this this mix right like he like he seems like the type of guy that if you were just to have a conversation with him like just have a conversation with him in the library or something you'd probably like him he, he's pretty chill but if one of your family members was dating this guy or was in this guy's crosshairs for who he wanted to like pursue you'd want to kill him immediately mm -hmm. yeah i mean the first thing that came to mind was um <laughs> Dr. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> because nice. he's a villain, but mm -hmm. you but you you root for him because he's your main character and you feel for him and like what he wants even though his um he's he's kind of doing the wrong thing. Um but then they they villainize the people who are not murderers. So like the first guy in season one that he kills is Beck's a bad boyfriend, right? Yeah, Beck's boyfriend, kind of boyfriend, but um, like he's not a good guy, and yeah, that's kind of jo Joe's like whole thing is that he kind of only kills people who not deserve it because no one deserves to get murdered, but they're not good people, so. And that's it's digestible, like, like you said. Ex exactly. Like he justifies <laughs> it. Like he does. He's just not gonna like kill anyone. And, and and you're right. Like it is also just like Dexter because Dexter only kills people who are bad. But the difference with Dexter is 
he plans it and he does it to, you know, fix his craving. Right. But Joe's Joe is does like it crimes of opportunity. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or like sometimes like he accidentally gets himself into that situation too. Like he doesn't, you know, intentionally kill people all the time. Like, um, like he killed the stepdad of that little boy. Right. But he didn't I'll... plan it and he didn't do it on purpose. It kind of just happened. Right. But maybe you could remember, remind me, like he killed because he also killed Beck's friend. Like one yes. of her like her one of her close friends. How did I don't remember how or why that played out. Um I I forget kind of too, but I know he tried to kill her at some point but then it didn't work and then she she then was suspicious of him but um right. the reason why he like kind of tried to kill her in the first place was because she he felt that she wasn't good for beck to have right. in her life right so, and see and that's the part where he starts to get kind of like on the crazy side because yes. you're just like who are you to make these decisions <laughs> exactly <laughs> But then as the seasons go on, he kind of he kind of turns into this like, OK, I'm not doing this anymore, especially after, you know, um, the end of the next season, season where um, he I think it's the end of season two. Yeah. The end of season two is when he has a, a kid. <laughs> Playmat, stop questioning my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, opinion. I will say this. Before we get to talking about the season three, what season one did show, or maybe this was season one into season two, but um, the earlier season showed that he also does let, he can show mercy because he captures the one guy and he actually lets him go. The guy says, hey, you let me go. I'll be gone. I'll disappear. And you never believe it. So you think to yourself, he's just going to kill this guy because he knows this guy is just not going to be true to his word. But he lets the guy go. And then in later seasons, he actually calls the guy for advice. And the vice, and the guy is like living overseas with his girlfriend or I guess wife. Um, so like they do try to at least show that he's not always only about self-preservation, which it seems like the two times that he kills is usually out of the desire to protect someone or like a misplaced you know, desire to protect somebody that he thinks is in danger or to protect himself. But it showed here that he is capable of not killing if if he if he can like get himself to the point where he can at least believe the person is telling them the truth. Mm -hmm. I think that's that was going on in season two or between season one and season two, somewhere around there. Um, but then season two became even more interesting because that's when he meets another girl that he becomes obsessed with. Um, After killing the girl that he was originally obsessed with, by the way. We yeah. Can't, we, can't gloss, we can't gloss over that. <laughs> she literally killed Beck and then made it look like she killed herself. Right. Well, okay. <laughs> I figured. I mean, I forget. Like, at the end of season one, he had killed, like, five people, mm -hmm. including Beck. And then yeah. um, I'm just just trying to like you know kind of move yeah. along through the seasons but sorry see i'll let you go <laughs> <laughs> i just don't want to run out of time but um For sure. but in season two he's running away from the ex-girlfriend um i think her name is candace mm -hmm. uh and then he in between like trying to get away from her and he's being haunted by her but also not killing her because that's not what he does he's mm -hmm. not gonna you know and although you know she was really pushing his buttons and she's dating <laughs> the the brother of the guy uh, the girl the new girl that he is obsessing with and her name is love mm -hmm. and um love quinn yeah love quinn and just like to zoom right through this uh the season um the i think the most interesting part of uh the or I guess like what kept what kept me going through this season was him just always being in trouble, um, mm -hmm. finding himself in trouble and like, you know, having to always constantly get himself out of the weeds. And at the very end, you think like, you know, um, sh he's he's like in, in deep shit because of Candace discovering um, the body of the neighbor. Um, 
mm-hmm. that he has in this storage cage. <laughs> which he also was not. He also did not kill. Yeah, her, he didn't which, kill her. Which, by the way, shout out to shout out to uh, Jenna Ortega. Yeah. Um, one of her earliest, or one of the earliest appearances that I recognized her in before she was ever Wednesday. But yes, uh, her her sister is killed, and I think that's the whole thing. They find her sister dead in his container because he locks her up. But he comes back and finds that she's dead in his container, and he didn't do it. And he's like, "Who? Yeah. Who killed her?" Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And I think that's like the whole thing of of the season is who killed her. Um, and I think we do find out that it was it was actually love, wasn't it? Yeah, because in love also kills Candace. Yes, to save him. <laughs> and mm-hmm. then, and actually, uh, Joe was about to kill Love for killing these two girls. So, mm-hmm. did he actually murder anyone? That's yeah, you know, he did. He did. Oh yeah, he um, still did. Yeah, he definitely <laughs> murdered people. Um, <laughs> I just like they're just like not like significant characters, I guess. Or maybe it's just that mm. it's been a while since I watched it. But um, but then he he has he finds out that love killed these um, women, and then he was about to kill love at the very very end of the season after the reveal. Mm. Um, but he doesn't kill her because she says she's pregnant. And that's season two. And then that's when I, th- and I thought that was a great ending because, mm-hmm. um, well, I, well, first of all, I thought like, wow, he's, you know, he's with, he has someone that he can kind of share this hobby, <laughs> so to say. Someone that he doesn't have to hide his, true true self from and mm-hmm. he can be like his his complete open self with her so that's what i thought was like really cool about it um and that kind of leads into to season three when they're like they they move off to um what's what's that town called like Ma- don't Ma- remember but it's a it's like suburbia some sur- it's like suburban some... town yeah, yeah. Um, and I like the name of her bakery, a fresh tart. That's good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then all this crazy stuff happens there because it, it, it basically starts off with our first murder, which is the killing love. of, yeah, love killing the neighbor's wife because Joe is starting Looking to at her. yeah exactly joe because joe because joe is a predator <laughs> like that's the thing joe is a predator and he will always give in to his predator tendencies and love thought that he wouldn't and so then love kills the and then love is just as nuts so she like kills her thinking that oh you know kill the object of the affection but then that leads into what they have to deal with in the next season in that season because this woman goes missing they're looking for what happened to her they become friendly with the neighbor and the neighbor's kid and it all like us all come on it but then we he meets this new girl in the library that then they become close and then he kind of you know has a thing with her um I think lo- and love also kind of has a thing with this kid. It's just a total dysfunction mess. 101. Yeah. It's like completely dysfunctional relationship. But my problem but... with that with with the whole beginning of that season, season 3, is that like I feel like he already didn't love her anymore. Yeah. Because he was about to kill her and so it was never going to work. Mhm. Um and so I just kind of I just I feel like it's kind of dumb that he he let her live or that he you know continued on with it. So the well, ma- he did magic he was over. Because he had a kid. Yeah, but he he was he he did it for the kid. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, the things we do for children, but <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> you should continue. <laughs> but uh, it, it, I kind of felt season three was a little boring um because i agree after the initial murder there there i felt like there were no high stakes it was just it was just the two of them like falling out of love with each other and at first i thought like oh good like you know she has theo and he has marianne and like they can just you know like he thought go our separate ways and like we can just end this like normal people but she wasn't having it, 
and all hell broke loose and all of a sudden at the very end like the last three episodes like the tension so high like all these people yeah. just start kind of dropping like flies except for they don't because actually most of them survive yeah but you think everyone's gonna die at the end um but only the bad the actual bad guy dies so <laughs> yeah i mean even joe he like barely survives but then and does this whole thing where he fakes his he fakes his death. Uh, Marianne finds out the truth about him, or the truth uh, according to love, which is true. But love also has an agenda there. Mm -hmm. So, and then he leaves um, Henry. I can't remember his son's name, but he leaves his son behind. And when it starts, and when the season ends, he's in a new city, which we find out is overseas. And I think he's in France at the beginning of uh season four so that brings us to, see us to season four that's like been a recap of all of it now why don't we talk a little bit about like how you feel about like this first part one of season four that we we got to look at it's basically this kind of this mystery and if the different seasons had different i guess focuses you could say that the season one was joe being fixated on someone that he he loved in an unhealthy way and then season two was being fixated on another per a new person, but this person loves him back in the same unhealthy way. And then season three is, I guess, kind of the ramifications of that. And then season four is actually someone being fixated on him, where there is no fixation for him to, as far as, like, from a love perspective. It's, as a matter of fact, he's, like, not even trying to be involved with that, but it shifted to now somebody has an unhealthy fixation on him, so he is the object of that is being like pursued in in a kind of way which from a from a concept i think is kind of interesting but i'd be curious to just hear what you have to say about the the season and how you felt about it yeah i mean after season three i was like well what? <laughs> oh, can only go up <laughs> i was like where what what is what is gonna happen like what are they gonna do now that you know um is gonna be any better than what they've already made um Although, you know, season three had, a, at least season three went out with a bang, you know, that kept me wanting to watch more. Um, but I guess I was just kind of uh, not really that captivated, even so. Like, I don't know if I liked it. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I can't even describe how I feel about it. But my, my initial thought was, okay, this is, this is kind of like Clue, where you have to figure out like who the murderer is. You're like in this mansion full of yeah. all these rich people, and you have to figure out like which of these rich people killed the other rich person, and like why. Mm. And um, and so in that sense, I feel like it was not very interesting. Because he didn't get himself into trouble. Trouble found him. Yes. And I and think that's... found him randomly. Exactly. Yeah. And th Completely this... Completely randomly. Exactly. And this is, like, one of the things that I've just kind of been saying, especially sort of recently, that um, I feel like stories are better told when your characters are making decisions. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he didn't really get to do that. He's just kind of on cleanup, cleanup crew the the whole time, and he's not really deciding anything. And I think that's no. kind of giving me a little bit of a like a pause. Like, do I like this? Because on the one hand, it's entertaining, but on the other hand, because um, the stakes are still high. Like he's mm -hmm. in trouble, and I think that's. The, that's the thing that makes the show interesting is that Joe is always in trouble and he's always trying to get himself out of trouble. That's what makes the show so compelling. But the problem now is he's not, it's, it's not because of anything that he decided to do. It's just happening to him. He's just reacting to things around him. Yes. Yeah. That's why I wanted to ask you what you thought of the show because I had like kind of a similar feeling where, cause I actually binged the show and I finished the show in like, two or three days um and and i and i when i looked back on it i was like did i binge it because it was good or did i just binge it just because you know and i feel like 
I feel like the thing about you is that the actor who plays <laughs> yes you the the show you is that the actor who plays Joe Goldberg is very good. He's very fun to watch. He's his voice and his inner monologue is always interesting to listen to and it's just fun of see, seeing him on screen. Like I think that's a good example of how like good casting can really carry your material even if your material isn't that isn't particularly that good. I think that was the same thing with Dexter. Like no matter the season of Dexter or how weak it was, Dexter Morgan was always a fascinating character to 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 watch and to experience. And so seeing Joe and just being with that character, I think is what's more interesting than what's happening around him. And like the mystery, you know, me, I'm like, I, I like mysteries, but, and I'm trying to figure it out, but the show almost like kind of calls out the cliches of the mystery genre. And like, he even is talking about like what you, how you make, how you make a mystery story with a student and the things that they're talking about with making a story is what's playing out in actual real life. So it gets kind of ridiculous. Um, from from that standpoint so at the end for me i feel like and then and then the reveal to me of who the villain is that actually is doing everything is kind of like a yeah that's actually the only person it could have been even though i didn't think about it at the time because they take the character and just kind of remove them so that you're not seeing him so they do this whole thing of like you see him every once in a while but then they're just gone which is also a, a mystery novel trick like usually the person that is the the criminal is someone that you meet within like the opening chapters of the book or in the first like you know couple of minutes of the movie or show which is exactly what they do if oh, he meets them like somewhere in the midpoint in the first episode or somewhere near the end of the first episode anyway point is that all the little mystery tropes that they make fun of they actually do and I think in, in a way to like make it so like, hey, look how look how clever we are. And I don't know that it reads as clever. Um, so at the end of the day, like I feel like for me, I I enjoyed myself during only because of the fact that I think that I just really like Joe or like seeing that actor portray this character. And but the content that actually like was the like the bulk of season uh season four i don't think it was particularly good yeah and i'm kind of upset that they didn't really bring marion back because yeah, they basically send her off in like the first exactly. episode or two and that was like super that could have been super interesting yeah and I I... Guess she's not gonna tell the police <laughs> exactly and, and but, but the thing about it is like if you're gonna break up something good that you have that you have built which is the whole um love quinn and and joe dynamic where he's like she's almost like the perfect match for for him you know like that's how i felt i was like how perfect are they for each other where they can both you know like i had mentioned before be their complete honest selves with each other and not have to you know because he can't tell anyone else about it. He, he right. can't because no one would ever accept him. Like, that was proven with Beck. Right. So, and kind of proven with Marianne, too. Exactly. Um, but I was kind of thinking, like, if you're going to break that up with a character like Marianne, you have to build something with that, too. You can't just have her, you can't just, like, shove, like, you know, sweep her under the rug, which is what I felt like they did. I feel mm -hmm. like uh, maybe there was, maybe there could be like this next season where, you know, he chases her down, finds her, and then sort of convinces her that he, you know, like for us, it's digestible, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe she can accept him. Maybe she can't, but there, there could have been like a thing, like an up and down with that. Um, I don't know how good that would be. But that's kind of where I thought it would go. Um, kind of hoping that there would be something like that instead of just having her completely disappear. Yeah, I'm kind of curious where this part two is going to go with this whole, like, taking down the senator storyline. The feeling is so f interesting to, like, compare this to Dexter. But 
I even got a similar feeling when I was watching this as I got when I was watching the continued seasons of Dexter, where I had this feeling like, wow, the first two seasons are very strong. And then season three, for Dexter specifically, was like, it it wasn't that good. Season four was good, but then season five was kind of like, that's when it started to kind of shift. And here, it really felt like since like season three, this has started to take a shift where it doesn't feel as strong as the first two seasons were. And so I'm like, okay, so I don't think this is going to be the last season. They're probably going to at least have another season in season five. I, how long are they going to go on with this? Because it does kind of start to feel like you can't do this story for that long. Yeah, like, that's what I was saying. Like, what are you going to do now? Like, how much more of this can there be? I'm really interested to see what they're going to do for the second half of season four because they have um, already revealed who this mystery person is. The mystery you mm-hmm. is now revealed. So I'm curious about what they're going to do. Are they going to bring Marion back? Are they, you know, what what is there left? Like what stakes are going to be, you know, placed for the second half now that we know who this person is? Because it's not, now it's no longer going to be like, who is the killer who is the person right. now it's going to be a dance between the two of them and i'm just kind of interested to see what that's going to be like right and see that's also interesting because season four of dexter was also i guess they're all also like about two killers but like season four of dexter was very much about how dexter was getting close with a mentor that was also a killer um, but that was a killer that was able to like juggle having a family so like he was learning from him, but like in like getting close and developing a relationship with him. In many ways, it feels like you season four is kind of um, mirroring that in a way where you have this other killer who is trying to connect with Joe and get Joe to admit who he is. And in that way, is trying to develop a, a kind of relationship with Joe because he sees him in like uh, a respectful way. And Joe doesn't see joe just wants to kill this guy but i do wonder if they're going to play around with that relationship more where joe maybe realizes that maybe he's not too dissimilar maybe he also is a monster and this person sees him more clearly than any of these women have ever seen him like i really do wonder if they will play with the relationship and the dynamic between these two characters or if it is just going to be something simple like i'm going to figure out how to kill you and by the end of the season you'll be dead yeah i mean i I feel like that's the only way it can go where Joe kills Reese. Mm -hmm. Um, And and which is fine. I'm just wondering about the journey to get there. Yeah. See, I'm not okay with that. Like, I don't want to know, like, what's going to happen. But I feel like I already know what's going to, like, I know what the (laughs) end game is. And I don't want that, you know, because we didn't have that in any of the other seasons. That's true. That's very true because they were they were structured differently, but it is kind of challenging when you have something someone that's just clearly a villain, mm-hmm. and if the show wants to continue, they're not going to kill Joe mm-hmm. if there's going to be another season. Um, so the only things that can happen is that this guy either dies or the guy just goes away. Yeah, and I think that's kind of like why I'm kind of yeah. bummed about I it. See. It's because it, like it feels standard cookie cutter. Not, not even, it's just that, like, it's just so different from the other seasons where, like, even in season three, we didn't know what the end of the season was going to be. Like, True. I thought that he might kill her, but I wasn't sure. Because there's always that chance she might be like, yeah, okay, let's just do the divorce. And then she ends up with Theo or whatever, you know, there was always that, like, what if, like, that could happen, you know, it's a possibility that he won't kill her, but for you know (laughs) this like that guy's gotta die like yeah (laughs) he's gotta die (laughs) i can't see any other way for it to end now if they do something different and he doesn't end up dying then i'd be like cool i guess that you know oh you got me you made me think that you're gonna do something but then you didn't then i'd be happy with it and but i will yeah, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll <laughs> see. I do suspect that if he does die, it's going to come at a cost. Like, 
that's also something they did with Dexter, where he he killed this villain, but at the end of the season, when he killed the villain, someone that he cared about saw him kill the villain, and so now, and that's how the season ended. And it's like, oh crap! Now this person knows what he does, and they and they just spent like the last six seasons not knowing what this person what what he did. So I could see it even like going somewhere like that, where if if he does succeed in his goal, it's going to become it's going to come at great cost to the status quo of Joe's life. And that could be interesting because that could shake things up. So we'll have to, we'll have to see. Yeah. But is there anything else that you wanted to quickly get off your chest about uh, you seasons one through four? Um, no, not really. I just, um, hope, hoping for the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll after see. the next, the next part comes out, I th- and think it might come out actually, this week um it's either this week or next week i think it's in it's coming out in march yeah it's coming out in march i just can't remember if it was early march or later but it comes out this month so maybe we'll we'll revisit it and uh we'll do a show we get to talk about how we felt about the ending yeah i mean it's still really good don't get me wrong but because of joe yeah (laughs) because of joe no yeah it's (laughs) it's a really (laughs) compelling show i don't i just don't know where it's going right now yeah Exactly. So we'll see. But that's what we thought about uh, you, seasons uh, one through 4.5 at, up to this point. What did you guys think about you? Have you seen it? Did you enjoy it? Do you like Joe Goldberg? <laughs> Do you hate Joe Goldberg but you can't find, your, can't find yourself like not like watching him? Whatever you thought about it, comment below. Let us know. And when you're down there, if you guys like, share, subscribe. Even if you don't, though, I have been Chris, and this has been Cheryl, and I love you.